coach. It's Peter Rosenberg and Don LaGreca. Uh, obviously, this is not the uh, situation we thought we'd be talking to you in, but um, thank you for joining us on a day like today. We appreciate it. No, thank you, guys. Um, I want to get into a lot about your feelings and just how last night played out, but off the bat, I'd be remiss to not ask you, is Zach Wilson the starting quarterback for the New York Jets moving forward in 2023? Zach Wilson's our guy. Um, really excited for his opportunity and uh, um, excited to see for him to show the world how far he's come. And we were just talking up, as devastating as yesterday was. You won the game. You could have put your tail between your legs. Your team didn't. I thought defensively they were outstanding. You ran the ball. I mean, I, I, I don't have to tell you. You're an optimistic guy. But do you still see enough there that this season is way more than just salvageable that you can still be a, a playoff team and, and maybe deep into the playoffs? Yeah, you know, um, it's funny. I was... Uh talk to anyone inside a football building or any sports building everyone believes that they should be competing for the whole shebang you know but uh you know you gotta take it one day at a time just focus on your moment and do the best you can and find ways to get better and um you know and that's the only chance you have to put yourself in position to to achieve what you're hoping to achieve so you know i I'm, obviously i'm biased I believe we have a championship defense. I believe we have championship caliber uh, skill guys. I believe we have an offensive line that's uh, that's going to continue to gel and and show uh, their ability and and how good they that how good they can get and um, you know so we have a lot of really good things going for us and and I think Zach has improved so much over the course of a year and uh, has has uh, regained confidence not only in himself but with his teammates and. So yeah, there's there's a lot of things to look forward to. We still have a hard road ahead of us, yeah. you know. Um, it's uh, we've got you know over the you know going to Dallas in a short week. It's it obviously it's going to be tough. We all saw what they look like Sunday night, and uh, but you know we're up for the challenge. We're excited for the challenge. Did did Zach take first team snaps last week at all? Um, no. Aaron, usually the uh, the starting quarterback takes all the uh, all the snaps, and then he might. Get Get a couple of walkthrough reps here and there. That's uh, standard. But you, but you felt. Did you feel that he was in a good position last night and knew what needed to be done? Like, how do you assess his performance last night? Oh, uh, you know that's that's one of the deals. Though, as a backup quarterback, you're prepping in the in the meeting room. You're getting extra reps. Uh, you know, you might take a few scout team reps to keep his arm loose. There's things you do post practice to to keep yourself ahead of the game, so that you know you're, that's how you prep. That's league wide, um, but a lot of confidence in those guys. They they know that it, every player on this team knows they're, and really every player in the NFL knows they're just one play away, and uh, and you have to prepare accordingly. So a lot of confidence for him to go in there and, and execute the game plan as as it was designed. Now, will you be looking for another quarterback just so you have three again? And would that backup quarterback, that quarterback that you get? be someone that could be put into a situation to challenge Zach at all? So there, you know, it's a, um, we are, we are going to look for a third quarterback. I, I don't know what that, that looks like mm -hmm. or what that, what I get much detail on that right now. Uh, Tim Boyle will be elevated to our, uh, to the backup quarterback, but um, this is Zach's team. You know, he's gone, you know, I think, I think people get confused sometimes and I, I think we play the game of Madden in the outside world in terms of like, hey, let's just go get this quarterback, plug him in, and he'll be good. You know, there's there's so much detail that goes in the quarterback play, understanding the playbook, all the nuance that's been uh, created over the course of OTAs and training camp and preseason games and all the different meeting times and all the conversations that are had in the locker room. Like, there are, there are months and months and months of conversations that are happening and to expect someone to just jump in within a week or two and uh, pick up on all that nuance is kind of unfair, not only to the individual that would be asked of that, but to the entire organization as a whole. And so I think when, when people look at those circumstances, it, it just doesn't work that way. Now, um, so when it comes to Zach, we have a lot of, a ton of confidence. Like I said, he's, he's improved so much over the course of the year, confidence in himself and his teammates and all that. And, uh, so we're going to look to add a guy just so we can get third, uh, a third quarterback. But, you know, to, to, for anyone to expect that third quarterback to, to jump in and compete, it's, I think it's just unrealistic. 
When when did you really like? When did you really process that this could be bad? Was it within a, a few seconds, a few minutes? Was it not till halftime? Just take us through, you know, as a guy, just what your emotions were last night when you realized what was happening. Um, uh, I think it was midway through the first. Told our, uh, I asked somebody to go check on the quarterback, see where he's at, and uh, came back with the bad news. So, sort of on the first quarter. Yeah, it's just uh, it was just you just had a feeling that it wasn't going to be uh, great news, uh, Robert. When you yeah, we, I, was, I was hoping I was hoping maybe it, you know it, it kind of rolled his ankle. Yeah, okay, well, well that was the, yeah, that's what I thought. I thought maybe maybe you're getting a sprain and it just you know he it hurt, but he'd be back and then. Yeah, but but this is a guy that's completely committed to your team and completely committed to your team for multiple years. So I, I'm, I'm sure you haven't had a chance to process, and he probably hasn't had a chance to process, but do you feel like he can still, even from afar, be a positive, impactful player on your team, even though he's not playing? Do you still think he can help Zach and still be around this team, even though he's not able to perform? Oh, heck yeah. Mm -hmm. Um his presence alone, his voice, his words, um, shoot, his stories and conspiracy theories, all that good stuff, all of it is good. You know, he's uh, he's an unbelievable human being. He's got such thoughtful insight and, his, um, you know, he's a pleasure to be around. So he, his presence is not only welcome but wanted. Um, how much did you talk to him at halftime? Uh, Garrett Wilson shared with uh, Barton Hahn earlier that he got a, just a moment with him and, and that Aaron Rodgers' words to him were, sorry, kid. Um, did, did you get a moment or two with him at halftime? Uh, yeah, I went in there, um, gave him a hug, and, and uh, obviously we had to get to the adjustments, but uh, uh, just to acknowledge that, uh, that we love him and... and uh, and his story's not over. And that's not and that's not just words you guys are saying. Like we really get the sense from from hard knocks and from t hearing everyone talk, you got this guy really came in and won over everyone's hearts, huh? Yeah, he um you can't you can't fake what he did for as long as he was doing it. You can't fake that. Uh the amount of time he's invested in not only himself, this organization, his teammates, the fan base, mm -hmm. the city in itself. Um I mean, the, the man gave up a big chunk of change. Uh, he's, he's truly invested uh, everything he could in this, this chapter in his life. And, um, you know, I just, I just heard for him. They lasted four, four plays, you know. But, like I said, it's not over. I mean, right. him and, and his other instinct that he'll probably be probably going to come back even stronger. So, um, but we'll can let him process what's going on. I'm, I'm sure he's still trying to digest everything that's happened. All right, so your 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 team is devastated. You lost your leader. Uh, the energy in the building, the plug is completely pulled, and yet you guys come back with an amazing second half and win the game. Who deserves credit for that? How who kept them still engaged after getting that gut punch that they got? The locker room, always the locker room. Um, you know, at halftime, just uh, um, you know the big thing. You know, last year I think people, you know. Sometimes we need a little reminder. We were down 14-3 to these guys last year, uh, and we came back and won that game 20-17, and, and it was really kind of the same situation. It was 13-3, and I don't think there was a guy in the locker room that didn't think that we could come back, and uh, offense was speaking the right language, defense was speaking the right language, uh, and the challenge for our offense to go out and get points on this first drive, on that first drive, and the defense to continue to take the ball away, and, and you know, we talk about straining in the fourth quarter, and if we just keep straining and we just keep fighting and we just keep playing the, to our standard, uh, we'll find we'll find some cracks. And uh, and we did. What level of emotion? I, and I know it's a mixed bag, obviously, because yesterday was just such a bizarre, you know, terrible and then momentarily euphoric kind of day. The emotions when you ran on after the Gibson game winner, um, you don't often see the head coach sort of run into the pile like that. Uh, <laughs> where does that rank for you in terms of just all-time emotional moments on a football field? Um, here's what I'll say. I've said this a few times. I'm, I'm going to say it again. Um, but sometimes, you know, we when we're in this profession, we get jaded and we get frustrated. And, you know, God bless my wife. I love her to death. And, but she's, she takes it from all angles because she doesn't know how to stay off the comment section of the of the media. So she, there's a lot of anger. And I was like, you know, honey, um, 
every once in a while I have to remind her that on game day, we are so lucky that we get to experience every emotion that the human body has to has to offer. We experience all of it in a four-hour window. Um, all the ups and downs and the, the, the ebbs and flows, the, the anger, joy, all of it. And uh, and I could with, safely say without a doubt that in a four-hour window during Monday Night Football on September 11th, mm-hmm. I think the entire city of New York, all the Jet fans anyway, felt every single emotion that can go through the body, and uh, which is a blessing. And we are and we are fortunate that we get to experience that. 